You are feeding the genocider with the weapons that are committing the mass atrocities. The what deal? End the fucking weapons. The, this idea that oh, we have to get a deal done. Sure, get a deal done, but how about in the meantime, stop sending this mass genocider more and more weapons and money. I guess we'll get clips while it's happening. The CNN debate, or debate, uh, interview with uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. I've mm -hmm. seen a couple of clips from it already. One is, one is fine. The other one is, I don't really care for the answer, but she she presents it mm -hmm. well. Like I, she appears more confident in this interview than I've seen her in past interviews, which I guess is the real right. issue in the past. Are you gonna play it for us? Let's let's see. Sure. Let's see. Co confident let's start, Kamala. Let's start with the one I don't like. <laughs> I'm sure Trump will be uh, not using that one. <laughs> Confident Kamala. <laughs> Confident, Ka <laughs> Confident Kamala. <laughs> All right, here, uh, here it is. Had a lot of Republican speakers. By the way, this fucking question, I fucking hate this question, but anyways, here it is. Had a lot of yep. Republican yeah. speakers at the convention. Yeah. Will you appoint a Republican to your cabinet? Yes, I would. Anyone yes, in I mind? would. No, no one in particular in mind. I got a, we got 68 days to go with this election, so I'm not putting the cart before the horse. But I would. I think, I think it's really important. I, I have spent my career inviting diversity of opinion. I think it's important to have people at the table when some of the most important decisions are being made, that have different views, different experiences. And I think um, it would be to the benefit of the American public to have a member of my cabinet who was a republican had a lot of i hope she's lying because I, I don't like that of, of course <laughs> this is this is this is the game oh, i, I hate have to play but it, uh -huh. i hate the question more than the answer to be honest with you they would never and I, I retweeted someone who said this but this is like they would never ask donald trump this question yeah like they wouldn't even right. think about asking him the question let alone like would he answer this way but they wouldn't think even think about it yet here is just it's just it's expected Democrats. Oh, we have to. Why do Democrats have to capitulate to a fucking fascist party? Well, why well, does that's that the problem, make right? The, any sense the, at all? The, the messaging's really fucked up. If on one end you're like, hey, by the way, this this party is moving towards far right extremism, that Trump is Hitler too, all this kind of stuff. And at the same time, you're like everything the party is doing right now is fundamentally pretty profoundly like fucked up, going after like women's reproductive health, going after LGBTQ plus people, that kind of stuff. The 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 whole like I feel more people get alienated from the reach across the aisle takes now, or or the centrist takes, mm -hmm. or the you know, we can I think that answer meet, hurts her more than it helps her, to be honest. Yeah. The, no, I don't think people really what, care. What I voter mean, base I, is like, oh, I was going to, uh, I wasn't going to vote for Kamala, but now that she said she may appoint a Republican, well, I might, whereas opposed, I think this, <laughs> yeah. this, this suppresses like the left know, man. There is are, what this does. There, this kind of there are weirdos answer. out there, man. There are weirdos out there. I you don't mean, want the weird vote. JD Vance has that cornered already. I don't think yeah. there are weirdos that are vote for Kamala. JD Vance has that on lockdown. He's got the weird vote, all right? If I was her, a great answer to that question would have been like, uh, would you uh, appoint a Republican to your cabinet? You should have looked at it and went, now why the fuck would I do that? <laughs> yes. That would have been great. That, I mean, that, that would serve me. I don't think that'd be the best way to answer it. I would love that answer. Oh. But like, uh, just uh, maybe the answer by, by first asking, would you ask Donald Trump this question? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck kind of question is this? It's, he it's should so, have just said, it's so Dana, dumb. do you think you just fell out of a fucking coconut tree? Something like that yeah. would have been oh, fine. Would have been it would have reignited the magic. That. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like if she acknowledges the meme, then the meme dies. She has to let it kind of... I, I, they've true. done a good job so far, I think, sort of just letting that do its own thing and not having to uh, engage in it. But here is the, the other mm -hmm. clip. Uh, this one is not as bad. Generally speaking, how should voters look at some of the changes that you've made, uh, that you've explained some of here, uh, in your policy, is it because you have more experience now and you've learned more about the information? Is it because you were running for president in a Democratic primary? And should they feel comfortable and confident that what you're saying now is going to be your policy moving forward? Dana, I think the, the, the most important and most significant aspect of my policy perspective and decisions is my values have not changed. You mentioned the Green New Deal. I have always believed 
and I have worked on it, that the climate crisis is real, that it is an urgent matter to which we should apply metrics that include holding ourselves to deadlines around time. We did that with the Inflation Reduction Act. We have set goals for the United States of America and by extension the globe around when we should meet certain standards for reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, as an example. That value has not changed. My value around what we need to do to secure our border, that value has not changed. I spent two terms as the Wait, Attorney this is General the good answer? of mm-hmm. California. Pros- that, it has changed. It's better, it's better than the other answer. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah. one's, just this, one's fine, though. <laughs> this one's better to me because she brings she, she actually brings up the green new deal um and mentions how uh like she, she isn't she's not shit talking left-wing policy is is so she's mm-hmm. simply saying how she, mm. she that's still her value it's just a matter of i guess you know how she wants to get there or discuss it but uh, i feel like it's the best answer health. she can give because yeah. the truth is that she did change like in 2019 yeah, exactly. she said the border wall was un-American, and then she just pledged millions of dollars to fund the border wall. So she did change. So trying to frame that as her not capitulating, I think, is wise, but it's not very convincing. But I don't think that the normies are going to pick up on that. I think they'll think this is a good answer. Prosecuting transnational criminal organizations, violations of American laws regarding the passage, illegal passage of guns, drugs, and human beings across our border. My values have not changed. She's more confident than usual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I don't understand. I mean, that's why. what stands out. Is it, she? She seems more confident in her responses than uh, than past interviews. But uh, I think so too. I'm curious to see. Republicans the rest were of making it. it seem like she's incompetent and can't do interviews, and she only had to do this interview with Tim Walls to kind of hold her hand. But like, they always do a joint interview when you announce your running mate. There's always a joint interview, so there's nothing like out of the norm Here's with a, this. Um, uh, I should have saved the image, but there's a someone on, on Twitter put like all of the it's like the past, I don't know, like 20, 30 years of like campaigns showing a president and their VP choice doing interviews together. It's like every single one of yeah. them have done exactly this thing. This is not like unprecedented. This is for me. This is uh, J.D. Benz, Donald Trump. They both were interviewed by Jesse. Yeah, Martin. they did it too. What the hell? That happened. <laughs> but yet Megan McCain is like and I see screenshots because she has to be blocked, but I still see your tweets, Megan. I know she's watching. Where she's like, ah, this is so insulting to women that she has to have a man right there to guide her. It's like, I'm sorry, but do you get that vibe from her doing a joint interview with her running mate? Is that serious to the takeaway here? Like, that seems really And then unserious. somebody replied showing her father, John McCain, with Sarah Palin doing a joint interview. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Megan McCain is so, she's so cooked. Oh, she's the worst. Yeah. She's the absolute yeah. worst. Yeah. Uh, I got more clips here from this interview. Um, okay, yeah. There's uh, live in full now, by the way. Oh, okay. Oh, more. Easy to go clip, clip by clip. He suggested that you happened to turn black recently for political purposes. <laughs> I don't really think it was the fact that they ran with that identity. for so long. Look at me. Any same old tired playbook. Next question, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's it. <laughs> okay, that's there's, a great the, there's answer. the first. Good I think that's the best clip. way to answer that question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I look black or no? <laughs> I am right, here's, black. here's uh, Israel Gaza. So be Uh-oh. get ready to probably be disappointed. Oh, God. Uh, President Biden has tried unsuccessfully uh, to end the war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. He's been doing it for months and months a- along with you. Would you do anything Hope differently? I'm sorry. It's not a fucking war. It's a genocide. Let's why are yeah. we? Yeah, it's the same bullshit. Yeah. But again, these well, questions are all the properly. weapons dropping on babies' faces. Yeah, like really. Off. Yeah, it's calling it a war is such propaganda. It, the, yeah, the civilian numbers are. The civilian number hasn't changed for Israel since October seventh. Like, are you fucking kidding? This is not a war. War between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. He's been doing it for months and months along with you. Would you do anything differently? For example, would you? withhold some U.S. weapons shipments to Israel. That's what a lot of people on the progressive left want you to do. Uh, let me be very clear. I am unequivocal and, and unwavering in my commitment to Israel's defense and its ability to defend itself. And that's not going to change. But let's take a step back. October 7. Mm. Oh, come seven. on. Going all the way back. Start people were massacred. Many young people. Who She's trying to filibuster. This is a bullshit answer already. A music festival. She's Women not filibustering. She's propagandizing. Ten times. It's, it's different. As I yeah. said, then I. 
Yeah. yeah. A, a lot. Let's see yeah. what she said, though. Did she speak? Of, let's see if she got to um, anything. It, just so all. people know, a lot of the reports, a lot of what she's saying, the reports have been discredited. But anyways, let's like, obviously people were killed, obviously. But a lot of the other stuff that she, that she brings up here uh, is not necessarily true. I mm-hmm. say today, Israel had a right, has a right to defend itself. We would. And how it does so matters. Far too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. And we have got to get a deal done. We, we were in Doha. We Good have luck to get a cutting deal off done. Weapons. This war must end. In the meantime, and we must get a deal that is about getting the hostages out. She, this is just the same the shit she said in her speech. Of the American hostages. It Let's is. get the hostages out. Let's get the ceasefire done. But no change in policy in terms of arms and, and so forth. No, I, we have to get a deal done. Dan, Dana, we have shit to get answer. a deal done. When you look at... It's frustrating her. The significance because of the this pushback, to the, the families, up. to the people who are living in that region. Girl. Um, it... A deal is not only the right thing to do to end this war, but will unlock so much of what must happen next. I remain committed since I've been on October 8th. I need her to to, to what we must do to work toward a two-state solution where Israel is secure oh, okay. and in equal measure. Okay, this, the shut the fuck up. Yeah. Have that, it that is, came so good. much about. I just Israel. want to finish it just to see if there's anything yeah. else here, but determination Three seconds. and and yeah. dignity. I do tend to think she, uh, I continue to think that she's a bit handcuffed by the fact that Biden is the current president and she is, uh, I can understand, maybe worried if she is going to have a big shift in policy announced before she even becomes president that Netanyahu is going to try something to keep the U.S. in, you know, do something even worse. But the, the, I, I get all that. It's just that it's to hear this same bullshit, this two side bullshit. Like, at least speak to the realities of who is committing the, fine, you don't want to say genocide, who is committing the mass atrocities in Gaza? It's always, you know, they'll they'll happily mention, it, and it's yes, fine, of course, mention Hamas apartheid. killed civilians. Mm-hmm. Yes, good. Maybe also mention that Israel are the ones killing pal- innocent Palestinians. But it's, a, oh, it's what's happening in Gaza is with terrible. What is happening? Can you explain what is happening? Yeah, with exactly with American weapons. This idea, oh, we got to get a deal done. You are feeding the genocider with the weapons that are committing the mass atrocities. The what deal? End the fucking weapons. The, this idea that oh, we have to get a deal done. Sure, get a deal done. But how about in the meantime, stop sending this mass genocider more and more weapons and money like that. And again, she's not going to do that because that be, would be a policy change. This is really a Joe Biden issue. But it, it's just this two siding is just so it's so ridiculous. And it, it's just frustrating to hear this. The Especially same now, Israel just uh, killed 10 people in the West Bank. They launched an assault on the West Bank. Every, There's no Hamas every, there. They're invading the West exactly. Bank every single day. Not to mention, yeah. has anyone at all mentioned the fact that there's Israeli soldiers bragging about raping Palestinian uh, like oh, detainees? The, 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 mul- yeah. the multiple like, torture and rape centers that have come out. There's been torture and rape centers of Palestinian civilians. There's one one that's been uh, talked about that was a rape and torture center for Palestinian children, and another one for aid workers. Aid workers, like these, these mm-hmm. are three yeah. different documented cases of rape and torture facilities. Like that's at this point, it's like this is beyond the pale. Like, you at, at what have, point like, you like, like, you even have Cindy McCain out there, John McCain's right. wife out there, like criticizing Joe Biden for, for for not doing enough here. Like when you have when you've lost a McCain, like, like it, it's just it's it shows you how out of whack this administration is on yeah, on this particular like issue. She- she could have definitely i feel like what she said um during the dnc was a bit more i don't like when they ask questions like this especially to them um and they like kamala is not saying like mentioning at least the people of palestine palestinians got people of gaza at least it's almost like you can't say it you can't it's just like i can only say the people of israel october 7th hamas Mm -hmm. that's it like there's no palestine there's no like i want her to say that the only time i've really heard her say that was during the dnc and um i just that I didn't like that. I felt like she went a little bit too, like you said, filibustering 
um, BSing and giving us the same storyline that we're going to hear probably again and again and again when she's asked this. Um, probably for the debates, we'll probably hear that as well. I don't know. You know, um, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm at the point where like, it just ex is expected. Like I can't, yeah. I can't even get like, I can't even get up and arms because it's just expected. What I want to see is action. I don't let them say whatever the fuck they want at this point. I don't care. Where if she's elected, I want to see action done. If she's got to say whatever she thinks she's got to say to to save face for certain, uh, uh, you know, political uh, 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 expediency for political expediency or whatever. I don't I don't care what the the game is. Just do something to help the people in Gaza and stop playing this bullshit. If you got to use the words to play the game, fine. But action wise, you got to do something. I agree. I'll, I'll agree well, with that. Because... Part of the problem, though, is that like, and I agree with what you're saying, Matt. The problem is that she's not playing the game itself very well because we're in a situation where tensions continue to escalate. Um, and if Netanyahu invades southern Lebanon or launches a hot war with Iran. Um, if she doesn't break from Biden, that's going to get pinned on her too. Like by distancing herself from him explicitly, she has the opportunity to save face if, you know, shit kind of goes south. Um, and it could at, at any moment because Netanyahu wants Donald Trump to win. So why wouldn't he sabotage um, this situation, sabotage Biden even more? He's tried to sabotage Biden. So why wouldn't he actually do more? Like he's doing more right now. Like I'm saying that as if it's hypothetical, like he's invading the West Bank. So as things get worse, like she risks being blamed if she if she continues to tie herself to Biden's unpopular policy. Yeah, 70 you know percent of Democrats she, she, she's the vice president. She, like it's not that she's tying herself. She is part of the administration is the issue. Right. Like, like, no, I know. But like, the, but what, like with Hubert man, Humphrey, <laughs> he finally distanced himself from uh, Johnson, but it was too late. Can. So you can but do yeah. it. And Democrats increasingly, like Ro Khanna, Senator Gary Peters, are saying, yes, she should do it, and I'm going to tell her to do it, but she's not. And the longer she waits, the more she's playing with fire. This could all blow up in both her face and Biden's face. So it's really a gamble I she's mean, taking. But, but we keep talking about this as if they see the same thing that we see. Like, it, it's crystal clear that they don't view this the same way we view it in terms of it being, like, let's let's take the actual thing that we care about, the actual human lives at stake, the main thing. Let's just, for a second, for, for, for this conversation, let's take that out of the equation for a second and talk strictly about how this can affect the Democrats or her uh, uh, candidacy or potential administration. They don't view this as a liability. It's just that simple. Because if they did, we wouldn't be mm -hmm. this far into it. They just don't. They view supporting Israel at the level they support Israel as good for them. It's it just is. that simple. It, it is because yeah, that's no, their right. ally. They're, they're allies with Israel. They will not from day one, from when this news came out to when they came out about how they're going to help arm Israel. Uh, all of that, they, they picked the side and they stuck there. Um, and I think... For her to distance herself right now, um, you know, from Biden, we're not going to see that. Uh, I would say when she does, you know what I'm saying, when, because I'm putting it in, in the atmosphere, but when she does get elected, that's the important part. And I think that's what we need to focus on. Like, I hate to hear it, though. Does it bother me when I hear her sitting there and saying this stuff? Man, it eats me alive. I hate it. But mm -hmm. I'm like, when she gets in, that same, when she, like... When she, talking about a ceasefire, whatever, I don't know. But when she gets in there, I want to see the action. Um, I want to see her actually saving the people, um, uh, you know, of Palestine. I want to see that, like she said, um, because we hear, we already know how she feel about, you know, Israel and, and October 7th and what happened there and Hamas. That happened. We're not saying none of those things didn't happen. We're not saying that there are no hostages, but we know the story already. Since then, there have been thousands of Palestinians murdered since then with the help of this administration. So I want to see what that's going to look like with her in office. I'm not talking about just sending food trucks. I'm not talking about the little humanitarian pauses. I'm not talking about that. I really want to see some action when it comes to saving the people of Palestine. So 
Hopefully we see that. I mean, she, she wouldn't even have to do anything dramatic. You can literally just mm -hmm. abide by the international laws you're supposed to be by not providing weapons to a country doing war crimes. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's a thing, yeah. you know, the whole law and order, like, pastiche that they're going for. Yeah, she's God a prosecutor. Damn. Following the law should be her yeah. fucking bread and butter. You know, this is the most brazen violation that we've seen of international law. So um, it's, it's gross, and uh, I am... Uh, I'm not confident that she's going to make a change uh, if she's elected uh, because I feel like she should have given us a little bit more. Maybe it's possible. I think she'll be maybe easier to put pressure on and shame than Joe Biden to the extent that it actually matters materially speaking. I don't know. Uh, but it's just, yeah, it's it's really frustrating. And I, I think that you're all right. I, I think that she she's made a different calculation than us. She just doesn't think that this is going to hurt her. Um, or maybe she thinks she can win without Michigan or that young voters are going to look past this. She may be right about that. It's just frustrating because, um, you know, you would you would want somebody to view a genocide uh, in the way you view like we view genocide. It doesn't matter that you're a politician. Like, I don't care if you're a politician or you're a fucking billionaire. You're a human at the end of the day who should see suffering and react accordingly. But these people are politicians. They're dead inside. Uh, they don't feel what we feel or care. So it's just all cold political calculations. And, you know, the only difference with Harris is uh, the rhetoric. So um, it's fr it's frustrating, you know, but uh, as Rebecca said, um, as soon as like on day one, there should be protests from the White House, like be on her ass the second she gets in there and make sure that she feels the fucking heat um, because you can't i mean you should do that anyway honestly with every president it doesn't matter if you like them or not but we haven't has taught us. that's the problem yeah. we have not and that's right. that's why we have to make this an example do we love what's going on absolutely i love the feels of this it, it, it gives us hope all of the things are here but that does not I, I don't want us to lose focus when she gets in there it's like we're gonna be on that ass um Girl, you know so, about so a few covered in blood for me now so <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm not going to get tree pilled anymore i'm not living i'm not unburdened i'm very burdened yeah the, hun <laughs> the honeymoon <laughs> I mean, so is over for me been. completely too just, the honeymoon's I mean, over folks yeah no i really really no i'm i'm People get upset. I had somebody on um, Like It or Not last Saturday. They were like, it's very cringe. Because I'm never in the comments, but StreamYard wasn't working. So the comments was up. And I'm, I'm, I'm always in my comments. But I was in the full comments. And somebody was like, it's very cringe how Rebecca is uh, like all up in Kamala's ass right now. I'm going to live there. I'm going to rent a house there, right? A uh, penthouse with that, <laughs> on that ass. Because, like, with what we have going on, I am I know that this is going to be beneficial for my future from what it could look like under Donald Trump's presidency. I'm not voting for a Green Party. They, right now, we have no time. There's no time to go there, switch it, look at it. There's no options. I'm not going to play stupid and be on that with y'all. I'm not going to hold tap it. I'm not going to uncommit. I'm not going to do anything. That's my business. Y'all do what y'all I want to do and I'm going to do what I want to do. At the same time, just because I'm loving what I'm seeing, I'm in the vibes right now. I, I'm hearing so much more from her than I ever had in her being the vice president. I'm seeing her stand up more as a leader, be um, just outside of just black platforms. Like I'm seeing her really shine, um, her being a woman. All those things are beautiful and they're great. Um, and I like that I can say that I'm all with it. And then I could be like, um, at the same time, you can't tell me that I can't hold her accountable just because I'm saying I love all these things. She's about to be president. I don't care who you are. We're going we gonna to be on that ass because what we have done <laughs> is no matter, no matter in the past, we have to be real. We've done put these people and sat them down with the whole, oh my God, lesser of two evils or like, this is better. And then just thought that was going to be great. No, no, no. We have to hold them accountable. That's what you do with your leader, especially when they campaign off certain policies or whatever, and they ain't even looking that way no more. You got to hold them accountable so that they know, damn, these people are really asking me to do stuff. Get it done. Or at least we know that you're trying. And that's what we need to do. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, it's not to give hope, but like we've been surprised before. I was, I've been stunned by Joe Biden on, on labor. That's the true. fact that the NLRB has been yeah. incredible under Joe Biden and like the mm -hmm. union rates are way up under him. Like there are, there are things can happen that you don't expect. Yeah. And, things that we and weren't looking usually at. Usually that's because of pressure. Like usually that, you know, pressure can do that. 
in the case of labor, I just there was no pressure on Biden to really be pro labor, but he's been pro labor. <laughs> or it's it, I don't even point, know if it's yeah. him, but it's wh whoever's around him, you know, doing the work. Uh, mm -hmm. I've, they've been good choices. So I think yeah. everyone should realize too that like this is something that profoundly upsets people uh, who care about this issue. I mean, you should. I think just generally people should care about misery, human suffering, exploitation. You know, the, from Congo to Sudan to to you know Palestine. Um, but like average everyday Americans, this is like every single time you you see what the polling is for voters, it's always like the economy you know, uh, jobs, uh, th those kind of things, uh, they, they, they are not concerned with foreign policy. So that I think that voice does have to come from the left. I, I think that mm -hmm. like, they're the only ones championing those topics and, and trying to get like the US empire to tone down.